starting a new painting is always exciting and possibly the most dramatic as you see it comes out in the fast motion. Uh, but if we generally just sketch out very briefly uh, the, the image, um, if you try to get the proportions right and everything to fit on that canvas, and then it's just blocking in. So at the beginning of the process, it's, it's painting in the base tones, so it's dark, it's dark, even light, light, um, but some base colour. Um, it's not just as simple as that, though. It's not literally just flat colour. I'm also using my brush to provide beginning textures. So you see here now I'm starting on the trunks. I'm just sort of getting the grey tone in, which is the underground tone of those trees. Um, now this uh, video is about 18 minutes long, so if you want to watch a shorter one, swap over. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about what I'm trying to do as I go along here. Well, here I am at Liffey uh, Camping Reserve. This is a wonderful spot and uh, there I am. I've started the canvas. I'm right in the middle of the car park. So uh, it's really nice. I get some sun this time around instead of being in the deep forest. So this is layer two. I'm starting to put in some of the main trees in the background. They're just starting to bring the structural details in. Um, and you'll hear me talking a bit about putting in the deep tones. Palette cam, a little rig I have put together. Not very successful, but hey, it gives you a different perspective. someone who really loves the dark tones of things so my photography really loves this really deep dark very tone one and two dark deep look so not surprising I'm enjoying just responding to this patch of forest so if I come back a bit from that now See that whole section is darkened up. You can't see that in the forest. You can see it's quite deep there. So as I work across the painting, I'm going to get a range of that deeper, which will give me that beautiful contrast with the trunks of those trees. So today will be a Play in dark paint day. Uh, just to build those deep dark shadows that, uh, that it'll even see there. I'm sort of scumbling across the top using a um, an underpainting medium, still quite a thin medium, so I can allow the. the I'm using. Um, raw umber mainly uh, and um, transparent black and um, what's my main black I think it's ivory black um. so layer three um, is going down and um, one of the really things that uh, is interesting is that uh, you need dark to see light light would mean nothing if there was no dark and it's one of the things the old masters used uh, to highlight the light of things well, as you can see when you look at the forest behind me that's actually what it's like most of the time as well that sort of deep inviting darkness um, which gives me the contrast to these trunks you'll notice as i paint the trunks i'm i'm very vigorous in the way i put my brush down uh, I'm not being very detailed or trying to be finicky about where things are and my philosophy is uh, be expressive over every brush stroke and be excited in those brush strokes. Uh, that's really important because it's around uh, making sure each part of the layering of the painting which you see through to the underneath layers reflect that vigour and excitement. 
you'll see occasionally here uh, feet behind me or people walking past is a very public space. Um, that's actually people coming and often have a chat with me. So I turn off the media and, and have a chat and turn it back on again. So back to palette cam. Uh, the audio in this is terrible because the, uh, the microphone on the phone is trying to find the sound and it's really fishy. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm bringing in another layer on top, uh, the beginning of the greens and the, the, the still in the background uh, areas, uh, painting in what's going on behind. One of the things about it, because I'm working in, on a big canvas in big layers, you'll see my palette's got large swaps of colour. That's sort of more typical when I'm working in the under the coating areas where the one piece of colour goes right across the canvas and I'm using quite a lot of it. Uh, but again, I'm just sort of putting in those details, uh, responding. This point in time now, I'm really looking. So I'm, I'm observing what's going on. I'm responding with the tip of the brush. Um, and uh, I'm sort of layering up that, that layer. So you sort of see those layers from underneath and because I'm using transparent paints those layers build across to bring complexity so when you get to the final work it, it looks like I've spent hours with little fine details but in fact it's been hours with broad straight brushing uh, and a lot of a lot of vigor in that. Um, painting live has its magic moments look out there's some birds just about to come and visit me. Because this is fast motion, you won't see them quickly, they'll flitter in and out. But this family of fairy wrens uh, live in this area and, and they come right up to me. I just be, be careful that they don't come and try and eat the paint. There he comes, just coming through. And that's one of the things when you're alive and you're sitting in a live location, uh, you've got this ability to respond to what's going on around you in the environment. So what I talk about is distilling light and time and place. So as I paint, I'm distilling what's in front of me. Over time, I'm bringing the best of it, I'm balancing it out. Right? It's a bit like you're sort of blending a whiskey or a brandy or something. You're, you're bringing the fine tones, the things that you want to see and ignoring the things you don't need to see. And over time you're doing that. So this is about layer five now. I'm putting in the shadows of the foreground. I'm starting to put more detail in. My brushes are getting smaller. Uh, but still it's that vigorous layering. And that's sort of looking and seeing and distilling what's there in front of me and describing over time uh, what this place is. So. Um, I've always wanted to paint silver wattles, uh, they're just magnificent. They're an interesting tree, they're a guardian tree in the forest. Wattles have short lifespans, uh, but silver wattles are a little bit differently. Uh, wattles are nurture trees. They grow in a place and allow other trees to come through and grow in their place. So in a normal wattle in a gum forest, they don't grow high, but they nurture the small gums until they get high enough to get over the top. In a beech myrtle forest here, it's the opposite. They grow tall and big and enable the slower growing canopies to build themselves up to the very tall canopy of the silver wattle. So that's really special. And you don't necessarily notice what's going on if you walk past a, 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 a tree. And, what I'm talking about when I say I'm distilling place is that I'm understanding place as I'm painting it. I'm seeing what these wattles are doing for the beech myrtle forest behind. And they're getting older and they're gnarly and some are falling down. But as they've grown over a longer period of time than the smaller wattles, they have enabled the, the um, myrtle forest below, behind, to become um, mature. So right now, I'm um, just sort of now working again on lightening up. You'll see what I go with the process as I build layers of lightning and darkening, lightning and darkening, and that sort of builds the roundness of shape in my work. So these trees um, have this amazing organisms of life growing on them, and you'll, shortly you'll see me starting to paint in the, in the little mosses as well. Um, 
I tend to work from the back to the front. Uh, so the last thing that tends to be done in a painting is the foreground. So here it's the grass, as you can see, they're very underpainted still. Uh, later on, I'll work, you no know, work at all in the background. I'll be just working on the front foliage. But here I am putting in more of the light effect, um, but it's light over time. So it's not like a captured photo. Um, over this period of time, this is a winter painting. <laughs> you can see the, the clouds flying across on the reflection in my window there. Uh, it's a winter painting and the light is very tight in winter and it's very bright against dark in winter too. So winter light in Tasmania is really significant. And so what I'm doing here is, is capturing that. It's not uh, a defined science. Um, it's a period of three hours, four hours I work on a painting. So the light changes all the time. So I've got to be responsive to that. Uh, make sure that I do it in the morning or the afternoon so the light doesn't change totally. But the light at the moment is to the north and um, as I'm putting in this detail, the, the stronger light you'll start seeing coming on the north face of the tree. Um, so you still need that roundness of those mosses that the darker lighter brings in. And now as we start working on the little finer detail branches, uh, again, just very quick, very vigorous, uh, a very long filbert number two brush um, and you can sort of see um, it's sped up a little bit but um, what you probably miss out in the speeding up is the time to stop and look and wait. Um, good AI on these um, cameras nowadays. Okay. I'm now starting to build in the, the textures of the front, the foreground. Still got work to do on those front waffles. The thin waffle there nearest the palette is uh, a dead one. It's uh, going to fall down sometime. Fortunately, it didn't fall down while I was painting the picture. And uh, beautiful. So now I'm starting to work on the brackens in front. Um, You'll, you'll notice I start to, to, to block in some more of the grass at the front, lighten it up again. Uh, interestingly, most of that stuff will be covered up with the next lot that comes across. So um, it's about bringing light in and then bringing shadows and light and shadows and that play back and forward until you build, build the texture. And that builds underneath texture as well. Um, you'll see it's my outfit that I'm wearing. Uh, different gloves, different hat. It's cold. Um, most of this painting is done when the temperatures were were um, around about two to three degrees C, uh, up to about ten degrees C. So, and you have to be really careful with the wind. The wind is a real problem. So, fortunately, I can only paint on wind that stays. And I love being in the sun here because it, this Tassie sun is really warming. And now I'm just starting to bring in the final details across the top, uh, light and shadowing. And what I'm doing now is I'm bringing glazes in. So I'm now around about uh, glaze layer 7, and I'm now darkening up with a transparent glaze, uh, which will see through to the colours underneath. Uh, it's a thick medium, and uh, you can sort of see now that darkening up on the, the shadow side strengthens the roundness of the tree. Um, I've still got to get the depth in as you walk into the canvas, uh, but now it's sort of like those final details coming back, touching up some more of the lights, bringing them up, um, adding in a few more trees and, and branches up there. Uh, and now I'm sort of working on the bracken. There's a lot of bracken here on the side. Uh, bracken's interesting. It's not a native Australian fern. It's an introduced one, and it's right around Australia now. So they've taken over most of our forest areas. Um, but it sort of sits naturally, I don't mind it too much, uh, and the animals uh, have been damaged by it. Um, but it dies off in winter, so by the time I finish this painting now, the bracken's getting browner and browner and browner. When I started the painting, the bracken was bright lime green. Uh, so it's becoming a winter painting. Uh, and at this point in time, interestingly, as the winter painting, the wattles are starting to bloom. And, and so you know, I don't paint the wattles in, but the, the ground is starting to get a little mist of yellow. Uh, from the from the wattle um, uh, flower that's falling, the pollen that's falling out of the tree. 
And now I'm just starting to get into the really finer detail. Still got the big brush though. I do swap to a small, really small brush toward the end. Um, I don't think I've actually got film of it, um, of the last little bit of detailing I do with the really fine. Still a number one or number two brush, but it's a, it's a round, long hair brush. Um, yeah, I didn't realise the light had moved into that bright, right to the north now. Um, yeah, finally get to sit down, <laughs> working on getting it. That little log on, it's that bank that I'm painting there, I just discovered about a month after I finished the painting that that bank is covering a log come from the other side and there's a there's a log under there and it's grown over the top and the mosses and the and the grass are growing up over this log uh, wondered why it was so bumpy there um, but, uh, you often don't see things until you open your eyes up and, and uh, I've been working in this forest for a long time and realized there was a whole tree under that bank so now I'm just sort of getting the final lighting down. Well, it's signature time. I'm very happy. But right now, I get to do this job. I love getting to the signature. That uh, tells me that I'm at the point of finish. Um, one of the things that I do in my signature is uh, I include a little graphic symbol uh, in there. I've been doing this since I started painting at the age of um, 14. Um, I've refined it a bit now and I've changed it fractionally to, to make it a bit easier. Um, but uh, you'll see at the end of the signature I, I spend a little time on, on that. So if you look at all my paintings you'll see that little signature graphic. It's a little bit like Albert Durek. It's a, little AD on a, on a on a stamp type of thing. Um, but I haven't yet managed there, my signature has changed over time. It was R. McCain to start with and I've changed that to Russell McCain. But the signature itself hasn't changed a great deal. Um, and um, as I finish it off, uh, I might have to have that little bit of extra. All done. So there it is, finished. Go to my website, rossmccain.com, and you'll be able to see a uh, completed, really high quality looking photograph of it, um, and be able to get to see those bits of detail that you can't see when you sort of on this videos. But really enjoy uh, the process, and happy painting.